Hello everybody, now we move on to a new topic which is an oscillator circuit and this is the topic learning outcome. At the end of this topic, students should be able to differentiate between feedback oscillator and relaxation oscillator and then describe the operation of those oscillator. Given any circuit, you should be able to analyze the circuit, draw the waveform for the given circuits and find the frequency of oscillation for the feedback oscillator or relaxation oscillator. For this topic, uh, we'll talk about an oscillator whereby a sinusoidal waveform will be produced. Sinusoidal waveform is used in variety of purposes, for example, in the communication system, in the signal transmission, and so on. Okay, we'll talk about two types of waveform generator which is an oscillator or sinusoidal waveform and then we move to this square waveform or we call it as a multi vibrator first we look into what is an oscillator which is a sinusoidal waveform or sometimes it is called an ac signal generator it will generate a periodic waveform whereby you will have a sinusoidal waveform and there is no external input for this circuit except for a power supply which is a DC voltage. So now we move to two types of oscillator. We have two, two major classifications which is the first one is feedback oscillator where you have an amplifier and a feedback circuit and the other one is the relaxation oscillator where you will have a RC timer circuit that control the operation of your circuit and under the feedback oscillator we look into RC oscillator and LC oscillator and phase shift and wind bridge are two types of oscillator that will be covered in this topic followed by Colpitts and Hartley in the LC oscillator or tune oscillator. As for relaxation oscillator we look into UJT oscillator, square wave oscillator, triangular and lastly, 5 r 5 timer where we'll talk about a stable multivibrator and monostable multivibrator. A feedback oscillator in general has an amplifier followed by a feedback network. We have talked about negative feedback but for oscillator it is a positive feedback where a sinusoidal waveform will be generated if we fulfill a Parkhausen criteria. We'll talk about that later. Okay, and the feedback circuit will attenuate this signal. Okay, so you'll have a feedback signal which is in amplitude less than the output signal. And sometimes it is out of phase with the output signal depending on the type of amplifier used. And this type of feedback oscillator will use a negative feedback where the feedback signal is in phase with the input signal to the amplifier. So there is a closed loop over here and oscillation will occur. As for relaxation oscillator, the other type of oscillator, it will use an RC circuit where we have a switching that control the circuit and the waveform produced is a square wave or sometimes it's just a triangular wave and the RC timing circuit is very important in generating the periodic waveform. Just now I mentioned about the feedback oscillator where it uses a positive feedback. So if you remember, we have talked about the Buckhausen criteria. Suppose that we have a non-inverting amplifier. Your input must be in phase. It is amplified. It will be attenuated by the beta over here. It is in phase. And the total loop around here will be 360 if it is an inverting amplifier. So over here, it is out of phase, your beta, the total phase shift is 360 degree. Okay, so remember that another important thing for the closed loop gain, beta multiply A must equals to 1. This is the Buckhausen criteria that must be fulfilled in order for the circuit to be an oscillator. And this is the block diagram of a positive feedback. Okay. A signal over here, I use X out, the output of your amplifier, input to the amplifier as XI. This is your source XS and the feedback signal XF. This is your beta. Okay. Previously, I have shown that there is no source over here because for positive feedback to be an oscillator, you just need this loop. Okay. But if you take into account the fundamental of feedback, the only difference is the summing point here, the input is in phase. Okay, so we can write one equation at this summing point, xi, the output is equals to the input is xs and xf. 
or we can write xs is equal to xi minus xf. A is the gain, so it will be the output which is xo divided by the input xi. And for beta, it is the ratio of the feedback signal over the input signal which is the output signal. So beta is equal to xf over xo. So with this, okay, the overall gain for this system x out over xs is af. Okay, and we have to find what is AF. So in order to find the overall gain of the positive feedback system, okay, this is the system just now, which is X out over XS. Over here, what you need is just substitute XO with AXI because XO is the input of the amplifier multiply with the amplifier, you get XO. And just now, the relation between XS, XI and XF is XI equals to XI minus XF. And XF is beta XO. From this, I just replace XO with AXI. Okay. XO is A multiply XI. You have XI over here. Everything divided by XI. So you left with A divided by 1 minus beta A. So what you have here is for the positive feedback, your gain AF is equals to A divided by 1 minus beta A. What will happen if beta A equals to 1? So, you have 1 minus 1, right? If 1 minus 1, it is 0. So, meaning that the overall gain will be A divided by 0 and it goes to infinity. But what will happen is actually the system becomes unstable and it will oscillate. So, this is how the oscillation occurs and produces sinusoidal waveform. So, actually, we don't need this XS. We just need the closed loop over here, beta multiply with A must equals to 1. And the phase shift around the loop must be 0 or 360 degree. So the total closed loop gain, A multiply with beta is a function of frequency. So I can write it in terms of the magnitude and the phase shift. Or this is in polar form. I can write again the Backhausen criteria in terms of rectangular form. Okay, so you have a beta cos theta plus j beta a the magnitude sine theta. So this is how we represent the Backhausen criteria in the form of equation. So you have to abide this thing, these two, okay, and we can write the Backhausen criteria as a multiply with beta is a function of frequency. And if it is satisfied the Backhausen criteria, it is one with a with an angle of 360 degree, which is the phase shift, or in the rectangular form, it is 1 plus J0. So if you look over here, this is very important because after this, when we analyze any given a feedback oscillator, if you look over here, the imaginary part must equals to 0. And with this, later on, we will be able to find the frequency of oscillation for the given circuit. Remember, this is what we need. Beta multiplied with A equals to 1. So we'll have a sinusoidal waveform uh, produces. But if beta A is not equal 1, in this case it is less than 1, your signal which is produced over here will dice out. Or if it is greater than 1, it will be increasing up to a point where you have a clip over here. So what we need is just this beta A equals to 1 and the total phase shift around the loop must equal 0. Okay. So with that, I stop and we continue with the next topic in the next video.